shout out, shout out to Four Shells Cabo for hos- hospitalizing, <laughs> <laughs> for being hospitable, <laughs> putting us in hospital, for being hospitable. See, it got me all wavy. <laughs> Hey, what up everybody? It's your boy Mellow Downs and we're here for another episode of Cover Corner and today uh, I've got a very, very special guest, somebody that I've been a fan of for a minute just from in, from in the background and all that. So like, yeah, I just want to welcome Frankie Adams. Welcome to Cover Corner. Thank you for having me, Mellow. Yeah, no. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. I don't, I don't think I've ever consumed Cover in, in um, excess. Wow, wow. Well, this is the first time for everything and and say now, let's have an inu. Oh my, just, yeah, cool. Thank you. So You're excited. Welcome. <laughs> Cheers. Manuia. Manuia. <gasps> it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you hit that like a G. Of course. So first of all, how, how you been? What's new? What's new? No. Um, I just got back to New Zealand. Mm. I went on a, I was one of those assholes that went to Europe for the summer, oh, yeah, for the course. winter here, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So having Samoan heritage, do you and your family have much of a background with kava? And what are the, some of your past experiences with kava? No, I mean, I, I, I don't think we do it a lot. I, yeah. The last time I did it, I was on Manono Island. You know that island? Mm. The one in between Upolu and Oh uh, Yeah, no, I never It's know. so small, but I went there um, to shoot something and that was the last time I did it. And um, with a whole bunch of my tie in there, it was very serious. Wow. But no, my family don't. Because that's what like with Samoan culture, kava is more ceremonial and more mm-hmm. celebratory rather than like when I went to Vanuatu, it's like a after work you go to a kava bar and you, yeah. you get smashed off kava kind of thing or Fiji's. When was the last time you vis- visited Samoa and what are some of your favorite parts about returning to your homeland? Um, the last time would have been before the pandemic. Yeah. I think the first time, well, because I was born there, my sister and I were oh, born wow. there, and but we didn't. My mum couldn't afford to fly us back when we were growing up. So the first time I went as an adult, mm. I could not stop crying. It was yeah, such yeah. a spiritual experience. I didn't know what it was. I think it was a sense of home, sense yeah. of belonging. Um, but what's the best part? Seeing family, um, eating all the food, mm. driving around the villages, seeing all the life and colour. And yeah, yeah. Because what, what village are you from? I'm from Sabapali in Savai. Savai. Oh, you're from Savai. Yeah. Nice. yeah. I'm from uh, Apia. Yeah. A village called Vain yeah. Nice. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm going yeah. back for Christmas, actually. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. Oh, yeah, cool. It's be great. So, are you full Samoan or like who's Samoan in your family? My mum's full Samoan, my dad's Kiwi. Ah, yeah. Yeah. So, my, both my parents are half. So, I'm kind of like a hybrid. You're, well, you're half. half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where in Auckland did you grow up and what was your childhood like? Um, I grew up in Owairaka, which is Ma- Mount Albert, essentially, oh, yeah, between yeah. Mount Albert and Roscoe. Yeah. Um, I grew up with my mum and my two sisters. She's, cool. my, d- my dad passed away when we were when we were kids, so mm. she ha- raised us by herself, and we didn't have a lot, but we mm. had each other. Cool. I grew up in a very Samoan household, I yeah, would say, yeah. <laughs> traditional Samoan household, nice. like church, yeah, yeah. all their type of disciplines and things like that. Yeah. But um, and mum spoke Samoan to us, but yeah. Just a very female-oriented home, I guess. Lots oh, of nice. sassy energy. Yeah, that's like me. I grew up with my grandmother. She was like full Samoan, so yeah. she just kind of was harder like for us Samoan. But yeah. it was funny because like when I went to school, um, they thought I was like Middle Eastern or like white. Yeah, I'm half. You, you, you do kind of have that look though. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm Samoan. They're like, you're Samoan because I couldn't really speak. And then it doesn't was, matter. You're Samoan. Yeah, but then I was like, come to come home. I'll take them home to my nana. Yeah. And she'll be like. Yeah. And they're like, I don't even know what she's saying. <laughs> yeah, shout I out. understand though. Yeah, I will yeah. say that. Take so, me to your grandmother's house. I'll yeah, be like, yeah. So shout out to all the beautiful women in our yeah. lives. Yeah. This one's for you, mum and grandma. Okay. Money we Oh my. Is this Whoa. your. This is what you do for fun, eh? Yeah, pretty much. How did, how did you get into acting? And mm. was it something you're passionate about? Or did, did like an opportunity pass and you're like, oh, I'll try this out and it just kind of worked out? I'm getting work? the, um, sorry, I'm getting the numb tongue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how did I get into acting? Oh, I never thought I was going to do it. I, mm. I was playing netball really competitively. Mm. And then, but I didn't love it. It was sort of, my mum really loved that we played sports, but I just kind of went with it and mm. didn't <clears> love it. I loved the arts and things like that. And yeah. then. I was at, I went to Auckland Girls Grammar 
and um, they needed someone to play Robbie Mangaseva's daughter on Shorten Street. And so my friends just dragged me along. Yeah. I was like school uniform, holding the scripts, just so rookie. And then, um, yeah, then they they get they they were like, oh, you can come back for a callback, which I was like, what the fuck is a callback? I don't yeah, know what yeah. that is. Which was like the last round, basically, is mm. what that is. And then I got it, and that's how I got into acting by accident. And then mm. a couple of years into that, I was like, oh, I'm going to get really serious about this and oh, do it cool. properly. So yeah. you picked up the passion. You're like, damn, that's yeah. what I want to do. Yeah, so. yeah, I got lucky, basically. Were there any TV shows, movies or actors you grew up watching that really made you kind of like pursue it? Like, oh yeah, if this person, I want to be like this person or was mm. it kind of just like... No, it was more of a happy accident, but I did get inspiration. Like the good thing about being on Shorty was that Tawila Blakely played my mum, mm. Robbie Mangaseva played my dad, Poor Mangaseva played my cousin. You know, we had like Shivo and Ruakere in yeah, there. Yeah. There was just so much inspiration around me. There was one time I was sitting in, in a dressing room with all four of them and I was like, honestly, yeah. the six year old in me would be so stoked to know that this became my life. What's the first album you remember buying? Um, gosh, I, I can't remember exactly, but I know after dad died, mum did these like sweet little gifts for us. <laughs> yeah. And it was 2000, so, you know, yeah, yeah, bear with yeah. me. But, she bought us um, this Britney Spears album, the one with Oops, I Did It Again mm. on it, and the Venga Boys. Yeah, yeah. And that was um, my first. Was that like one of those album. Now kind of CDs with the compilation? No, it was like was the separate, but I do, oh, love, I do yeah. love the Nows. The Nows came after that. Because what, um, what music did you grow up on, like listening to, like, apart from your Britney Spears? Or <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was six year old me, okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, my cousins, the, just like classic Alia, Tupac yeah. kind of stuff. I mean, as I got a bit older, I kind of got more into like D'Angelo, Erica Ooh, Badu. I became yeah. quite a soul sister. Yeah, I yeah. would still identify as one now. I love Erica Badu. To be honest. Yeah, I met her. What? I met her. We're here or? I don't know why I'm whispering. It's, this is great. Everyone needs to know. <laughs> um, yes, I met her here. She came. She came to perform, and then she wanted to have. A, she wanted to experience what it's like to be on a, on the marae and my friend's mum was organising the vegan food and she was like, don't tell anyone, but do you want to come? And I was like, yes. And I had dinner with her at the marae. Wow, that's the most like unique, special experience I, I could have think, I could she think of. She sang a cappella in the marae, like barefoot and everything. And she wow. just like, it was so amazing. We were all- Is there photos of that somewhere? The, I think I have, I'll have something that, in my files. I do powerful. have a photo somewhere, but yeah, wow. that was amazing. She's a, she's a goddess. Yeah, she is. And then saying that, let's have a little bit of a joke. Right. <laughs> Did you get John Campbell quite high? Yeah, he, he actually went to work. He wanted more. He went to work. He went to work straight after, yeah. Oh my God, I don't even know if I can do anything after this. <sighs> when are we at? When are we at? <sighs> okay. It tastes so good. <sighs> shout out, shout out to Four Shells Cabo for hospital. Hospitalizing, <laughs> for being hospitable, putting us in hospital. for being hospitable. See, they got me all wavy, <laughs> but for being hospitable and hosting us here. Oh. So, if you're ever in the area, pop into Four Shells Cover, they'll look after you. So, yeah, uh, you kicked off your career with the legendary New Zealand soap opera Shaolin Street. What was that experience like? And do you remember the moment when you first found out you got the part or the role? It was amazing. I think it was exactly what I needed. It felt mm. like a drama school for me because um, I was 16. Um, so you were still in high school? I was. Oh. I was. It was at Ags. And then the weirdest thing ever was we were all supposed to go to like Tongariro or something that day and I missed the bus. Mm. So I had to go home and they called me that day and told me I got the role. And I wouldn't have got the call I oh, think on the way. Yeah. 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 And Damn. so and I just was like shaking and I didn't I, and I called my mom and yeah she was like oh that's nice. <laughs> like, which is literally what she says anytime I get a role now. She's like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's nice. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't yeah. quite get it, but she's always very proud. Yeah, I gotta love island parents. Like, even my mom, I'll be like, Mom, I got this. I'm playing, I'm headlining, blah, blah. She'll yeah. be like, oh, nice. Yeah. And I'm like, it's like, when are you coming to see me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. How did you juggle, um, like, being in high school and then getting a role on Sean Street for the first time? Um, I don't think I did. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. I, I actually ended up dropping out. Oh, it yeah. was quite a hard juggle because it was a full time job. Mm. Um, which, yeah, I mean, it worked out for me, but I wouldn't encourage anyone to, to drop out of high school. Yeah, it's yeah. not a good idea. Uh, well, I did too, and I'm doing well. Yeah. Hey. Drinking cover on a weekday. Who would have thought? Or Frankie Adams. Come hey. on. <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> but if you could create a dream character to play in a film or series, what would that look like? 
Oh my god. If you goodness. had like full creative control of a character or a narrative. Oh, obviously just like some sort of mana wahine. Mm. I really I'm really fascinated by the women of the Mao movement. Yeah. Um yeah, something obviously like powerful female character. I mean I I pretty much play characters like that. I'm not, to be fair, like I'm quite lucky, but Yeah. Something down those lines. I'll I'll just write it. Mm, cool. Yeah. <laughs> what was it like initially transitioning from your Auckland home and upbringing to the lifestyle of Hollywood and LA and that whole kind of lifestyle? Yeah. Um, it was fun. It was a lot. It was too much fun. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. Um, and didn't didn't do a lot of work, but it was quite different because I our family grew up quite poor, and then I managed to save a bit of money mm. to go to LA, and then it was just so big. It felt too big for me. Yeah. Um, now it feels like a second home, but it was difficult and it was a lot of fun. It's really easy to get lost in the source. Yeah, yeah. Did you meet um, any of like Polly's over there? Not many. That's what I miss actually. I shot a show in Toronto for years and I really missed seeing Polynesians. Yeah, yeah. No one's there because it's so cold. Yeah, Why would true, you leave true. the islands and go there? Yeah. How long were you in Toronto? Um, on and not like six months on, six months off for about four years, I think. Mm. It was funny because um, when I was in LA, uh, we got um, invited to this Dreamville party. Do you remember that, Dan? <gasps> what? Yeah, I was like buzzing out. Like the bro, one of the Dreamville guys was like, yo, come through. Oh. And me and my DJ, my bro Baz, we were like, bro, we're going to a fucking Dreamville rooftop party. And then he just gave, he wrote down the address, put on my phone. And then the next day I was like, let's go. And then the bro's like, Nah, man, he would have been just drunk, you know, talking shit. Like, yeah. I was like, nah, let's just go. And we, we pulled up and there was like a line all the way down. It was like somewhere near sunset. There was a line down the road. And then the bro was like, nah, fuck this. I'm not waiting in line. And I was just like, oh, man. And then just as we were leaving, I saw at the door and the security guard had a full on someone sleep. That's where you, that's <laughs> and where I was like, handy. we're coming in, bro. We're yeah. coming in. And then like, my bro was like, nah, bro. He was like being real, kind of like, let's just roll. And then we pulled up. I was like, sabu so like, bro. And he's like, where you from, bro? Where yeah. you from? <laughs> I'm, like, American I'm from New Zealand. I'm from New Zealand. He goes, I went to St. Peter's, bro. And I was just like. That's how you get into parties. And I was like, straight up, so my name's on the door. My name's on the door. <laughs> I looked and our name was on the door. And we were up on the rooftop and pinching us out. Like, but yeah. Thank you. Thank you to all the bouncers out there. Yes. They have led us into parties. Thank I you so much. I love the culture. Like, I love our, our people. Because yeah. it's like, when I, was, when I was having studio sessions, people were like, where are you from? I'll tell them like I'm Samoan Maori, but they don't really know we're Maori, like Maori, or they, they think New Zealand's near Switzerland. So I'm like I'm Samoan. Mm. When I'm saying Samoan, they're like universal. They're like oh my security guard is Samoan. Yeah. Oh, I play gridiron with a Samoan. So yeah. we got like a good reputation over we there. We do. Yeah. We do. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fantastic, Melo. How are you <laughs> feeling? This is pretty neat. Oh no, what did John Campbell say? Oh, I'm feeling pretty whacked. <laughs> yeah. That was my favorite. Thank you, doll. Oh good. Blessings. Blessings. On a journey with Mello. Apart from your family, what do you miss the most about Aotearoa when you're not home? Um, the food, mm. um, the the sense of ease here. I think overseas people are very busy. Yeah. They always have somewhere to go. Um, the landscape. So yeah, this is cool because um, I saw you play. Uh, what was the character you played for the Polynesian Panthers? Tessa. Yeah, how was that? And like, <laughs> like you were talking about, um, your dream kind of role would be like a mana wahine, and yeah. Tessa was quite a hard kind of character, like hard woman and character. Yeah. Like, how was that? How was that experience? It was amazing. Mm. It was. I mean, I, I was too old to play one of the Panthers. Um, so, but then when I read the script, I was like, who is she? I like her, what, what's, what, what's she about? She mm. seems like my age and kind of worked well with my, who I am as a person in real life. <laughs> that sounds weird, because like, <laughs> but you know, like, we, yeah, yeah, I, gotcha, I, I understood gotcha. her essence and things like that. Yeah. And so, um, it was so much fun. Like everyone, it was such a lively set. Mm. It was just so nice to have everyone be Polynesian basically, even like behind the cameras, everyone yeah, was, yeah. it was just, there was always music and laughter and the sense of community and family. Yeah, yeah. Um, I loved that job, I was so happy yeah. to do it. I, and they, they 
made it work around my schedule. Thank yeah, because that was my first, I, I'm not really like on TV and stuff, but that was my first time being a part of like a set like that. And it was so cool to see like- Did the, you go in? Yeah, because we did the <gasps> soundtrack stuff. Oh my yeah, God, so we did, that's like, right, that's We like right, pulled up on cool. one of the last scenes uh, at the race course. Yeah. I think, yeah, and we did this quick video clip. But anyway, like, Sick. it was cool to just come and just like look around and see like Sammy in the wardrobe. Yeah. And like Crystal and yeah. like, uh, Tom and just everybody's like PI and I was just like man yeah. this is such a beautiful like we've come such a long way in terms of TV um, and yeah. it looks great when it came yeah. out I felt so proud Everything, when I watched it, that it looks so real and yeah so yeah that was a pr proud moment I had when I was just like man this is Polynesian excellence at its mm -hmm. finest mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely and the soundtrack was amazing well done yeah yeah shout out Diggy and Choi Tingy and uh, Choi Swan everybody part of the soundtrack as well yes <laughs> when are we at when are we at So yeah, talking about the Polynesian Panthers, why was it special getting to work on set with all Polynesian cast and was it the first time you've experienced that? I know you mm. had like an, another experience with like the OGs from Shona Street as well, mm. which would have been kind of maybe a similar kind of yeah. environment. Um, I think as you said before, like brown excellence, it was it was so evident in, mm. on that set and we all had this common goal. I mean, if you think about the story I mean, the, the part of history that was so hidden from, from so many people and then having the opportunity 50 years later to have yeah. a show entirely about it, that, that was, we were able to like educate a lot of people. That was so special. Yeah. And it was just fun. Yeah. Uh, I throw a good party, by the way, if you, if you I, I throw a good party for that. You should have come to that. Oh man, was <laughs> the invite, man. <laughs> <laughs> what do you hope to see for the future of Polynesian representation in mainstream TV and film? Um, holy moly, ask that again. <laughs> what? I, I was like, man, that sounded brainy. What do you hope to see for the future of Polynesian representation in mainstream film and TV? More of it. I, I think like exposure is so important and mm. we're, we're still sort of niche in, this, in a sort of way, like overseas, it's, it, whenever I do something over there, like, someone actress, uh, you know, it's like so. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm proud and everything like that, but I'm like, do you know there's so many yeah, of us yeah. and you, you just need to open the doors and let us get in because the talent is unreal. Mm. Um, I think about that in Samoa too. I'm like, like all the people that perform at churches and things, yeah. they're so talented there. They don't have the resources and yeah. things like that, but if they did, we would be everywhere. Yeah. So I think just like more exposure, more time on screens, cast us, mm. have us write things, shoot things and all that stuff like give the opportunities yeah for sure and the world will be thankful what's it like at, like what's it like reading scripts and like when you're on set do you like um go by directly what's on the script or can you kind of like free not freestyle it but like make it your own if that makes sense like, mm -hmm. ad lib and improv. yeah yeah um that's so dependent on who wrote it and who's directing it yeah. i I love reading scripts and I pretty much read everything that I can before I do something. Um, but I also love, you know, having a play and things Freedom, like that. So yeah, it just yeah. depends. And you have to do, you do have to keep some sort of structure because of every scene has a point. Yeah. But it's nice to add like humor and things here and there. And, or you can, I always have discussions with the writers or directors about changing things if I feel mm. I know a little bit more about the character in one way or. So yeah, it just depends. People cool. are pretty collaborative these days. If you could play anyone in a movie, who would it be? Like, hmm. could be real, could be like a character, could be a superhero. Maybe Sade. Oh. <laughs> I don't think, I don't, I mean, I don't think mm. that's gonna work, but she's just so special. She's a goddess. Yeah. Erica Badu, Sade, Alicia Keys. Yeah, one of these. Oh yeah, Alicia Keys, I feel there's like a top tier, like, you know, Mana Wahine in terms of like, yeah. Soul or music, and those are three of them that I, mm -hmm. me personally, I'm just like. Yeah. 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 Any of them, really, but then I'd have mm. to sing and wah wah, that would be really bad <laughs> for me. God. What's the most valuable lesson you've learned during your time in Hollywood and in the film industry? I think, I mean, this is repeated a lot and probably a bit cliche, but it is really important to be kind. Mm. Um, just don't be a dick. And, and, Work really hard, but also live your life. Yeah. Don't neglect that you that you have a real life as well. Um, but yeah, be kind. Don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. Okay. And what's new for you? Like, um, 
you're do you have are you, are you in a series or like you've got any up and coming roles that you can talk about i do actually i can talk about one i have one coming out soon um i did this limited series with this actress Sigourney Weaver I don't know if you mm. know but she's amazing um, and that will come out on Amazon in a little while cool yeah. we'll be on the lookout it's for that. fun I've got blue hair in it Shay, what's what's your character like um, she's vivacious bit flirty fun kind of broken mm. love it you love know. it love it love <laughs> it they're just the kind of characters I play yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh I love it Let's have another email. All right. How are you feeling? Amazing. Nice. Yeah. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> you got much plans after this? Um, I did. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Cheers. Cheers. Ah! I love it so much. What What do you taste when you drink cover? Like, what are you? What are your taste buds telling you? Root. Rooty. Mud. A little muddy. Maybe yeah. like actually more sandy. Yes, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, it's pretty earthy, eh? Earth, yeah, earth. Um, it, yeah, it's giving earth. It's giving, <laughs> that's pretty giving, and it's giving earth. It's time for that cover buzz. Oh, um, whoa. whoa. <laughs> okay, these are quick five questions. I'm not looking. <laughs> What's your favorite emoji? Um, uh, flames. <laughs> can you put the, can the graphics guy put it right here? Uh, Rihanna or Beyonce? More, uh, oh, Beyonce. I'm sorry, I love you really so much. Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Harry Potter. All day. Hello. What, what, what house are you in? Um, Gryffindor. Oh, I'm Gryffindor with a Slytherin moon. Oh. Yeah. What's the other one? Huffle, uh, Hufflepuff, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw. Yeah, I feel I'm a, I'm a moon in Hufflepuff. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Would you rather be mm. blind and deaf or have no limbs and no sense of smell or taste? Oh, damn. Uh, blind and deaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then need, you can still eat. Yeah, you need your senses, right? Yeah. So only being, or oh, would you only be able to whisper or only be able to shout? Whisper, hello. <laughs> you you look like such an asshole. But what if, like, you, what if you need help and you're like, help? Uh, then, I, then I gesture. Alright, so yeah, I'm with that. I'm with you that. Know. Okay, would you rather ruin a surprise for a surprise birthday or show up to a red carpet event in pajamas? Chic pajamas, red carpet. Oh, <laughs> I'm with that. Um, cookies and cream, ice cream, or hokey pokey? Oh, cookies and cream. Nice. <laughs> would you rather get a paper cut every time you turn a page or bite your tongue every time you eat? Paper cut. I, I love. don't like paper cuts, hey, but no, then I don't like either. biting my tongue. But I, yeah. Alright, so we come to the end of this cover corner interview. Um, before we finish up, is there anything you want to tell the people? Anything you just want to put out there? Um, not really. Just thank you for this journey. It's been beautiful being here on this ride with you. I'm amazed I was able to drink that much. You did really thank well. Thank you guys. <laughs> and yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you at the next one.